Hey, you wanna know a secret? I had never heard of homeopathy before until I went out to Bastyr University in Seattle, Washington to study naturopathic medicine. And I've got to admit, I was a pretty hardcore science junkie at that time. I mean, I got my undergraduate degree from University of Kentucky studying biotechnology. I was literally creating uh, Franken soy and Franken tobacco and engineering DNA into plants in my undergraduate studies. So when I got out to best year, I kind of had a chip on my shoulder that this better be science based. And honestly, I would have completely turned my back on homeopathy if it hadn't worked for me for so many different things in so many different ways. So I'm about to share with you my top four favorite homeopathic remedies for pain and the reasons why you might want to use them. But before we get into it, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time we release fun new content. As a naturopathic doctor, I ran a primary care clinic in Washington State for 10 years. And I kind of thought of my job as like sitting on the fence. So I could look, I could sit on the fence and I could look at the entire world of conventional medicine, which was mostly drugs and surgery, and the entire world of natural medicine, which was the herbs and nutraceuticals and counseling and physical medicine and homeopathy. And I would look at someone and ask enough questions and look through their history, figure out what have they tried, what's worked, what hasn't, in order to get the best sense of where does this person need to go in all of these different offerings that are out there in the world of medicine. Are they going to best be served by a natural approach, a conventional approach, or a beautiful marriage of both? And so oftentimes I would do an assortment of things with someone, order this MRI, let's do those labs, and let's try these herbs, and oh by the way, Let's try this homeopathic as well, because it just might work for you. So I had a little nickname for homeopathic remedies. I called them magic beans. <laughs> yes, you can laugh because when homeopathy works, it works on so many levels that it seems like pure magic. And what is homeopathy anyways? It's these little pellets that you get, and you can get different brands, but little white pellets that you take under your tongue. And there's honestly not one specific dosing structure for them. You sort of take them and try them again in a few minutes or hours, and if they haven't worked within three to five doses, they're probably not gonna work at all. But sometimes one dose can work magic. So homeopathy was first discovered in 1789 by a German physician known as Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. And Samuel Hahnemann was a very smart, forward-thinking man who really looked outside the box. And it was when he was studying cinchona bark or Peruvian bark for uh, illnesses like malaria, because the drugs like quinine and hydrochloroquine have all been synthesized from the cinchona bark, he was noticing that when healthy people took these drugs, they had similar symptoms to the ones that the drugs were trying to cure. And so in uh, seven years later, he published his first article in the Journal of Practical Medicine on similia similibus, which basically means that like can cure like. Now, Dr. Hahnemann faced a lot of criticism throughout his 60-year career in medicine, but he also had some amazing successes. When the Asiatic cholera outbreak epidemic happened in the 1830s, Dr. Hahnemann's patients who were treated homeopathically only had a 2 to 20% mortality rate, and the rest of the general public that was treated with a more conventional approach had over 50% mortality mortality rate. Fast forward to today and you can now find these little homeopathic pellets in every Whole Foods and co-op across the country, but most people have no idea how to use them. One of my favorite things about homeopathy, besides the fact that when it works, it seems like it works like magic, is that when they don't work, there's no harmful side effects because they are so diluted. So in homeopathy, this is super weird, right? The more dilute it is, the more potent it is. 
I'll try to figure that one out. But uh, how that works, what the, that means, uh, like a 30C potency, like this one here, they've taken one mole or one unit of whatever substance they're using, and it could be plant, animal, mineral, uh, one mole of the substance and diluted that into 100 parts water and take a stir that up, stir that up and taken one drop of that and diluted that into another 100 drops of water. So that a 2C potency means that that's been done two different times, one part into 100 parts water twice. That's like saying there's one part of that substance to 10,000 parts water. So by the time we've gotten to a 12C concentration or dilution, Dilution, there isn't one single molecule of the original substance left but still they often have amazing effects on people. No wonder this concept is kind of ridiculed by traditional medicine, right? It's hard to wrap your head around it and I agree. But the reason I'm talking to you today is because the day before my first day of medical school, I was kayaking down a class four creek with a bunch of my buddies when I dislocated my shoulder and I didn't have the stability and I rolled over and I smashed my face right into a rock. And I didn't even feel it at the time because there was so much adrenaline involved. But I rolled up and my buddies looked at me like, oh, it's not good. And I felt my face and I realized that there was a huge gap between where my cheek was supposed to meet. So yeah, trip to the emergency room and uh, 15 stitches and a massive black eye later. I was walking into my first day of medical school and people were looking at me like, oh my gosh, you know, someone should give her some help. And someone took me to um, the office of one of our uh, beautiful uh, professors and she was the most lovely woman. And she took one look at my little mangled face and she said, oh dear, sit down. And she was so nice and so loving that I just trusted her immediately. And when she handed me these little white pellets, I had no idea what they were, but I was like, okay, you know. So I, I put them under my tongue, I let them dissolve there, I followed her instructions to a T, and I thought that was interesting. And I went home and the next morning when I woke up, I was in disbelief because all of the bruising, all of the redness, the bloodshot eyeball, all of the swelling was gone. All you could see was the little incision line and the sutures were still there. And I was blown away. I have never healed that fast in my life. And the remedy that she gave me at that time was Arnica Montana. So let's get this straight first. Homeopathy can work beautifully, but only if it's the right remedy. Each remedy has a materia medica, or a list of indications of what this remedy might possibly be helpful for. There's no way that they could put that entire in materia medica on one of these little labels. So oftentimes someone might recommend homeopathy to you and the label says nothing about what it's being recommended for. Trust me, that's part of the process. So Arnica Montana's main indications are for bruising and trauma, and really specifically for bruising and trauma around the orbit of the eyeball. But Arnica can also be super useful for cases of old trauma. Let's say that you've developed arthritis in an area and it's because of an old trauma. Arnica Montana can sometimes help uh, improve the healing of that even if it's an old injury. Arnica Montana is also really well indicated for labor pains and that swelling of the cervix and the, the soreness of uh, the, the cervix after delivery of a baby. Arnica Montana is definitely one of my favorites to recommend that my clients have on hand after any type of surgery, even plastic surgery or a tooth extraction. The bruising, the swelling, the soreness after surgery, Arnica Montana can really be helpful then, but not before. It's funny to me that sometimes people take remedies before the actual injury happens, and that's just not how they work. So, Arnica Montana is indicated for bruises, sprains, strains, and any old injury that still has chronic pain that is from an old trauma. And yes, you can still take it and your other medications and your traditional anti-inflammatories.
The second remedy that I would like to mention today is Hypericum perforatum or St. John's wort. So Hypericum perforatum is classically known for nerve pains. Anytime someone gets a shooting, darting nerve pain down their arm or down their leg, like very common with sciatica, sometimes Hypericum can really take the edge off of that pain. When I think nerve pain, I think Hypericum. Also, painful scars and phantom limb pain can sometimes respond really well to Hypericum perforatum. The third remedy that's on my list of favorite ones to have around the house in your own home dispensary is Rust Toxicodendron or Rust Tox, homeopathic poison ivy. Super weird, right? But Rust Tox is known as the rusty gate remedy. Very specific in cases of arthritis, when someone is restless and they just need to move about because if they sit down, they stiffen up too much and the pain gets worse. Who can relate to that feeling of sitting down for too long and then having a really stiff low back when you try to get up? Rust Tox is a remedy that is known for helping with that type of pain. And it's also known for being the remedy that's helpful kind of like a if you're a human barometer and your joint pains are always worse right before a storm or worse right before the rain, worse as the temperature changes. Rust Tox is a homeopathic that is well indicated for pain that occurs during those times. And the fourth and final homeopathic and my short list of ones to think about for pain this week is Ruta graviolens, commonly known as Rue or Herb of Grace. So quick story, one day I was in the National Guard training in our two week summer stint and I was running in combat boots and I sprained my ankle so terribly. I was on crutches the rest of that deployment and it took, it was eight months later and my ankle still hurt. I would have this little jab in there when I walked and running was excruciating and I was worried that I had ruined my ankle for life and I was going to have to have ankle surgery. And then I remembered learning in school that Ruta graviolens is specific for chronic sprained ankles that fail to heal. And so this is no lie. I took two little pellets of that remedy because I had it in my little emergency box, two pellets, and my pain was gone. In 30 minutes, I went for a run and I was pain free and that pain never returned. It was truly like magic. So, Ruta graviolens is also recommended for any type of a tendon injury, tendons that have been twisted or sprained, as well as uh, bone bruises, injuries to the periosteum or that lining of the bone. Ruta graviolens can also be really helpful for bursitis, as well as chronic ten tendon injuries that sometimes will cause cysts, like carpal tunnel and ganglion cysts of the wrists. I mean, isn't that what we all want the magic pill so the art and study of homeopathy is a pretty complex science and these four little remedies might be super helpful to have in your home first aid kit as long as you know how to use them because the information I'm sharing with you in this video you're not gonna find on the label right perhaps the best choice is to look around in your area and see if there's someone who is trained in classical homeopathy. You could pay them a visit and it could change your life. It very well might be worth a try, right? Or if you're struggling with some kind of a chronic pain and you really like the idea of having a space age medical device that sends in waveforms that mimic your parasympathetic nervous system and retrain your brain into healing your body and you can have instant pain relief day or night in the comfort of your home, on vacation, anywhere you go, click on the link below to register for the My Pain Eraser and Rapid Recovery Program webinar to learn all about our program. And if you would like to learn about my top five favorite supplements that I take every morning to prevent joint pain, click on this video next. And if you'd like to learn more about that space age medical device that I was telling you about, check out this video, the five ways that dynamic neuromodulation can outperform traditional TENS. Thanks so much for watching. I send you optimal happiness and health, and I'll see you next time.